All right, so I woke up this morning and yep, I did it again. I cut my head while shaving. So if you see that spot there, I'm gonna save the beanie for another week and just you know say, hey, don't look at it one more time. I'm gonna be more careful on days when I have to make these videos so I don't have to come, on, come, come and explain it. But this morning I also saw something that I was like, well, I got to talk about this, which is that it's a perfect follow up to the video that I did last week when I explained to you that America 1.0, deep trouble, not reflected in the stock market, not well understood by people, not being reported by the financial media, and is going to be the story when people look back at this moment, three months out, six months out. All right. So stick with me. And if you didn't watch last week's video, go and watch because it has du direct relations, a relationship with what I am talking about today. So this morning, Home Depot, which everyone knows, I mean, you know, this is the big box uh, home improvement retailer, they've reported, all right? And if you go and check mainstream financial media, really you'll only know one thing, which is that they raised their dividend by, I forget the number, 16%, something, some big number that was celebrated by everybody. But underneath the headlines is actually very disturbing news that goes to the heart of what I talked about last week, which is that America 1.0 is in trouble. And if the Federal Reserve wants to increase rates as the market seems to think that it's going to by five or seven times in a row, well, America 1.0 is dead, done, and dusted. I mean, they, they, they're not going to make it. They're not going to make it, all right? I'm going to show this to you, all right? So this first image is from Home Depot's statement of cash flows, all right? And I circle the date, which is January 30th, 2022. So it's the most recent quarter. And then in red, I circled net cash provided by operating activities. This is in billions of dollars, and you can see Home Depot generated $16.571 billion in what would be called operating cash flow. All right. Now, here is the issue for Home Depot and companies like this, right? Which is that they are simply not making enough money for the capital commitments that they have made to their shareholders and that the stock market is currently discounting in their stock price. All right. So the second image is from a part of the statement of cash flows, and it's from the cash flows from financing activities. And you will see that I have circled on the first line, repurchases of common stock. And Home Depot in 2021 repurchased $14.81 billion worth of stock, $14.81 billion worth of stock, All right? And then on the second line, you'll see it also paid out dividends of $6.985 billion, all right? There's one more thing I wanna to point to before I come back to the very first thing that I started with. The third image here is from Home Depot's statements of earnings. And in it, the one line that I want you to look at is for the year, they paid out interest of $1.35 billion approximately, all right? So if you add it all up, if Home Depot was generating enough money out of its operations, um, well, they would cover their dividends, they would cover their stock buybacks, and they would cover the amount of interest that they're paying on their bonds. But remember, they generated 16.57 billion, all right? And just to make things easy for everyone to understand, I'm just gonna round higher, all right? So they bought back $14.8 billion worth of stock, right? So immediately they've almost used up nearly all the 16 and a half billion. There's only 1.7 billion left from the cash flow from operations, right? And they paid out $6.9 billion. So they're, they're already now like in deficit by over $5 billion. So they've wiped out all of their cash flow simply by buying back stock. So where are the dividends being generated from? Well, it's from debt. It's from their cash balance. And that's not something you really want to see. I mean, you want companies to be paying their dividends from their cash flow, 
You want them to be buying back stock from free cash flow. In other words, your operations are generating so much money that you have all this extra money that you can just go back and buy stock because you have no use for it. You don't need to use it for maintenance. You don't need to use it for expansion. You don't need to use it for growth. However, the, the last place you ever want them to be funding all this from is the bond market. In other words, borrowing. In other words, you're borrowing money and then you're buying back stock and dishing out dividends to shareholders. And if you go back to last week's video, I told you why this is a problem, which is that the bond market is seeing the troubles at companies like Home Depot, Clorox has the same problems, 3M has the same problems, Honeywell has the same problems, and others are going to be reporting this. And they are starting to sell corporate bonds away. I also showed you how bond market investors who are very sophisticated are buying insurance against this kind of credit risk. And you may think, well, Paul, these are just three or four companies. You know, it can't be such a big deal. So my incredible colleague, Ian, he actually went um, and actually did a screen for companies that essentially cannot cover these three things. Um, stock buybacks, their dividends, interest income. And he came up with this list. And I have to say that if you looked at this list, we're talking about big companies. I'm not gonna read them all, but I'm gonna read some of the highlights. Procter & Gamble, blue chip stock. No one thinks that there's any risk in this. Home Depot, Oracle Corp, Union Pacific, American Express, Honeywell, Altria, Cigna, Norfolk Southern, Sherwin-Williams, you can just go look. These are blue chip companies that so many people think are 100% safe, that there is no risk, that there is no risk, all right? So there's a major problem brewing with these companies related to the fact that they have been using the bond market to borrow money. They've been taking that money and sort of recycling it and sending it to shareholders through dividends, through buybacks, which keeps their stocks at very high levels. They're not generating enough from their operations to pay for the interest that you know, these bonds demand that they pay for regularly. And there is a problem brewing in the bond market where they in all likelihood cannot borrow additional money or the price is gonna be so high that people are going to look at their existing bonds and say, well, you're not able to pay the interest on your bonds. How are you borrowing anymore? We don't want to lend you anymore. And here's why this matters to us, which is that the narrative that's been running the markets is that inflation is high. The Federal Reserve is going to increase rates. That's bad for growth stocks, hence short growth stocks. The truth is the opposite. In other words, growth stocks have none of these problems. They don't pay dividends. Love it or hate it, they don't pay dividends. They don't buy back stock because they're growing too fast. They want to take the money that their operations generate and put it back into the companies. They have real growth, unlike these companies. And one of the reasons why these companies are struggling to pay their dividends uh, from operating cash flow or, or, or from their operations is that they don't have enough growth. They just don't have enough growth. Our companies have plenty of growth. And they're not exposed to the risk element of the market, which is the bond market. The bond market is about to shut out a number of these America 1.0 companies. So as things stand right now, we're at this moment that is very different. Uh, in the Incast, I called it a weird brew of a market, which is that there's plenty of cash in the market. And usually into a period when there's a problem with a set of companies, people buy bonds, except that's a, a, a problem part of the market. So people are not going to buy bonds because they're selling bonds. Um, cash is, again, plentiful. So people don't need cash. And there aren't that many places where you can go. So if you're looking to hide, you want to step away from risk. The place that you would go to, again, opinion, not advice from me, is growth stocks. Why? They got plenty of cash. They got growth. They don't borrow from the bond market. They don't pay dividends. They don't buy back stock. And largely, they have no interest payments because, again, they don't have any borrowings uh, because younger companies, bond markets simply don't like to lend to. They don't have the long track records that, they, that bond investors like to lend into. So from my perspective, 
the Federal Reserve sooner rather than later is going to come to understand that they're going to start locking out some of the biggest, largest, well-known companies away from the bond market. And they're going to see that a significant amount of the S&P 500 has a problem, and they're going to be forced to backtrack on what their plans are, certainly in terms of the number of rate increases and certainly the speed. And the market will get a sniff of this sooner rather than later and start to sell down the, the stocks of these kinds of companies like Home Depot, like Clorox, like 3M, like Honeywell, and simultaneously come and bid our stocks higher. So that's what I believe is going to unfold. The market is set up for this, hasn't yet unfolded. Nonetheless, things can change very, very fast. So I want to do this analysis to illustrate what I was talking about last week and say, I believe that things are going to get better. And I'm still very bullish, very optimistic, very positive. And I would say, be strong hands. And if you like this video, come back next week. Until then, this is Paul saying bye.